Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate the witnesses here. I, want, I just want to begin by the kind of basic question. I think it's one that increasingly everybody's coming to an agreement on, which is if we have critical minerals in the United States, that we should try to mine them and process them here as opposed to relying on China. Is that generally agreement? I see everybody nodding their heads. Is that you nodding your head, Mr. Pentland? Um, and then part of that is because we have the highest standards on the environment in the world, certainly in Alaska, we do. It's a never-ending source of frustration despite that kind of broad-based policy consensus. The Biden administration in so many areas, in my state at least, when they see critical minerals or mining opportunities, they shut them down. You, you guys don't have to comment on that. I'm meeting with the BLM director uh, in my office tomorrow. She and Secretary uh, uh, Holland have just been targeting Alaska incessantly. It's unbelievable. We have a place called the Ambler Mining District. Copper, cobalt, zinc, silver, gold, other metals, probably the biggest, one of the biggest mining deposits on the planet Earth. We did an EIS during the Obama administration, into the Trump administration, got a record of decision, six years, 10 million bucks, I think it was. Same day the President of the United States holds a critical mineral summit at the White House on the importance of critical minerals. The Department of Interior reverses the record of decision and tells Alaskans to start over. So I'm going to have a little discussion with Tracy Stone Manning in my office tomorrow saying this is nuts. Nuts. It's just the pro-China, anti-environment, anti-American policy. That's what they're doing. Anti-environment because China trashes their environment. Alaska has the highest standards in the world. Anyways, I just had to rant about that because it's just crazy, crushing jobs in my state and it's driven by the radical left. So Tracy Stone Manning and I are going to have a nice chat about that tomorrow. Um, but let me go back to this other issue of friend shoring, not only the production of critical minerals, but the electronic waste recycling and reuse, especially given some of the security concerns. And I'll just open this up to all the witnesses. How do we do that better? Right? We're in the, in the um, electronic waste recycling that if we can't do it all here, and I agree with that previous comment, that we're doing that within the uh, collection of our strong allies. And yes, making sure China's not in that loop because then we become vulnerable. What's the best way to do that? And I'm assuming everybody on the, the panel of witnesses agrees with the importance of doing that. So maybe um, Mr. Kochar, we'll start with you and then just go down the line. Yeah, I think there's two sides to it. I think on the corporate side, company side, you need innovation. And so we started our company seven years ago because we didn't see a path for recycling lithium. And as Senator Kelly mentioned, we also get nickel and cobalt and other things too. So it's a long journey. It's not easy. And, and are you takes... getting those supplies all over the world? And then so we, it's interesting. The, the batteries are everywhere. So you basically get them from locally where we are. So we're in New York, Alabama, Arizona. So we get them locally from around that area. Mm -hmm. And also the making of battery kicks off scrap. So I think a big part of it is, you know, what companies need to do to step forward. On the policy side, look, I think some of the steps that have been taken are very helpful, I think, to incentivize. But there are aspects, like I mentioned there, around leakage of material that need to be looked at. And it's not just in batteries. It's in e-waste. It's in other industries. We have to be practical about it, right? You can't, I guess, stifle companies at the same time. It's difficult. Uh, but that's a big threat, right? And we've seen it in our industry, right? 90% plus of lithium, nickel, cobalt, it's all heading through China. Hmm. So we need to build it here. That's a corporate responsibility. But there needs to be the right policy environment to help support that. Good. OK, Mr. Boswell. Yeah, I agree that you know there, there's a tremendous. Well, let me step back one minute for Senator Ricketts. Uh, I misspoke. It is required to 100% test, uh, according to the 2012 NDAA. That was one of the reasons to do that, for, to protect against that problem. But yeah, it, it, this is a global industry, and there are global supply chains involved. But we are developing a tremendous infrastructure here in the United States to recycle and reuse these products. Uh, companies like mine, uh, 
are constantly looking for new ways to make that path easier for consumers. And, and one of the things that I think it, there's a lack of understanding of is that this is done at a very high level and very technically. I, I, I think the historic impression of our industry right. was that, you know, they're a junk guy. Yeah. And we are not junk guys. In fact, in some ways what we do is far more technical than the manufacturers because we have to ha handle everything from an Apple iPhone to, yeah. you know, a Cisco router. And we've done that by tremendous investment in, you know, technologies to not only erase these products, but also to refurb them. We do come up against, you know, issues sometimes with the manufacturers where they don't support the reuse market. And a lot of the economics of electronics recycling is based on reuse. Uh, an item like an iPhone is worth 15, 20, 30 times more, 100 times more in some cases as a reusable product than it is as a recycled product for the material recovery. Hmm. And so the economics of reusing it support much of what we do. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I um, to have two other witnesses, if they can just quickly re respond to that question. Go I'm, ahead. I'm uh, over my time here. Yeah, I'll be quick. <laughs> I'll keep hammering don't go, on this. Don't go fast. Okay. Take your time. Well, really, there's, there's a vast network of underutilized collection sites in, in the country right now. Local governments are collecting the majority of municipal electronic waste. And a lot of that, if, if they don't have the local budget to support it, it's going to end up in their landfill. So if we were, to, if we were able to get a sustainable source of funding to them, hmm. you would see an exponential increase in what, what we would be capturing nationally. So I think that's really important to focus on. Good. Thank you. Mr. Pelkin. Yeah, and I agree with my peers on continuing to drive private and public partnership to drive awareness of the issue and to also uh, create the collection and processing infrastructure and ultimately really deferring to the EPA's sustainable materials management approach, right? Use materials in the most productive way with an emphasis on using less, reducing toxic chemicals and environmental impacts throughout the material life cycle, and assuring that we also have sufficient resources to meet today's needs and those of the future. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, no, you bet. Thanks, uh, thanks so much for being here. And I, I understand that you and Senator uh, Whitehouse are partnering on uh, some aspects of what we're talking about here today. That's good. Oh, yes, sir. I'm That's good. continuing to do that with him. Great. Thanks.